So is this actually the start of World War III? Or is it just a one and done deal as apparently Iran wants this to be? Bullish Iran hails attack on Israel as a success and says operation is over. But on the other hand, we have Israel saying confrontation with Iran not over, says Israel. Do you now see what I mean by this is being the, the, the start of what could be, well be World War III? Because there are interests here at play. There's people here that do not want this to be over. And in case you're wondering, why did Iran launch 300 missiles and drones to Israel? Well, that's a great question. Let's actually find an answer for that. For example, like this posted an hour ago by BBC, which are allies of Israel. It says, why has Iran attacked Israel? Iran launched drones and missiles towards Israel after vowing retaliation for a deadly strike on its consulate in the Syrian capital of Damascus. So things happen for reasons, and the escalation at this point is up to Israel. Does Israel want to escalate this? Well, usually usually Israel likes to escalate things. Personally, I think that's not good for the peace of the world. You may agree with me or not. Obviously, there's people that don't agree with me and think that you know war, war and conflict is great for whatever reason. I happen to not agree with that. Global calls for restraint after Iran unprecedented attack against Israel. This is from Al Jazeera. Uh, but it's also so interesting. For example, Israel bombards Hezbollah's Lebanon arsenal after Iran failed air attack. Keep in mind, uh, all of these 300, most, the great majority of these uh, 300 missiles and drones brought down by the Iron Dome, by fighters from UK, by fighters from the United States. Your tax dollars, your troops, actively fighting to defend the very valuable borders of Israel. I'm personally more of a Ron Paul guy. I think that the military should be mostly focused on protecting your own borders and your own sovereignty and your own land. The idea of having to send troops to fight this far away is probably not the thing I, I, I would agree with. And it's interesting that, you, as you just read, so in case for people that don't even know where this is going on, and I know there's a ton. This is Israel, right? This is Israel. Actually, all of this is Israel. The West Bank happens to be uh, the area in which you have a bunch of small towns and settlements where some Palestinians live under the absolute and complete control of the Israeli government. These are basically like a number of small prison towns in which they are kept and often quite a bit abused. The Gaza Strip no longer exists. This is all just rubble. And this is the 1950 line. It's not, you see it there. The line in which if you get close to it from this side, you get shot. It was a few months ago that was a concert for peace. Very close to that line in which we saw the attack from here to here because of paragliders and bulldozers. Apparently that constitutes uh, uh, an army of some sort? Anyway, now we have this situation where Iran launches an attack, and in response, Iran launches an attack on... On who? On Lebanon. Okay, that's how this goes. Guys, I I'm just saying what you see here, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you really want to escalate things, but there's obviously the intent to do just that, to escalate things. I mean, you could just leave people fend for themselves and pick fights with whoever they are and deal with the results without having you involved in it, and I think that's usually more conductive to peace. When people have to back up their own fights on their own terms, you're less likely to pick them. Now, if you attacking someone else or you bombing an embassy, or doing whatever, or going for a land grab, or whatever it is you do, and that immediately means the United States, and UK, and a bunch of our nations are involved as well on your side, well, that basically gives you a, a, a green light to do a number of things that are not exactly peace. Let me go through some of the messages here. Would you please have Matt Bracking on tomorrow? Would love to hear his thoughts on this. Thanks. I did send to him an email. Man, I don't know what he's up to this weekend, if he's busy or not. So if he replies and he has the time, 
I would love to talk with him and see what he has to say. If not, maybe next weekend or whenever when he has a time. But yes, I did contact him uh, or at least send him a, an email. And if we can do it, I, I would love that. And of course, it starts on weekends when global equity markets are closed. Yeah, always like that, right? It's always those days. It's always Friday night or Saturday It's when, when all of this shit goes down. Yes, we know about this already. Steven Bannon just covered the war. Gerald Clinton covered this also earlier. Okay. What the Iron Dome did not save them, almost like it doesn't... I think, man, yeah, I think the Iron Dome does does exist, and it did its job. And it, even more to the point, when you have the Iron Dome, when you have that kind of money, when you have the, the military aid of the United States to that extent, and when you have those fighters bringing down the attacks, it is interesting to see that, yes, you can defend a nation from a barrage of missiles. It's interesting that that choice is not made in the case of Ukraine because, you know, screw them. But for whatever reason, Israel is always counting uh, on, on the United States for their defense. Well, we're, I don't know, man. Are we all? It really depends. And it's also interesting that, oh, we couldn't do that because Russia has nukes. Well, Iran has nukes as well. Iran is a pretty damn huge country. We'll see that in a minute. But... Yeah, interesting how these things go down. Thank the Lord, conflict is now over. We will see what... Um, again, according to Israel, they say it will exact a price... <laughs> this is new, this has just been updated. Israel will exact a price from Iran. War cabinet minister vows. Well, that is good to know. We. It is so comforting to know that they, they want to have more and more war. Okay. You know what would be great? U.S. now invading Iran. That would be fantastic. Don't you guys want to send some good old boys to Iran? Where is Iran over here? Tiny little Iran. Right, Iran. Doesn't even fit in the damn map. Yeah, these things usually go well. Um, I mean, because it went so well in Afghanistan. Now, yeah, I think it's the only logical thing to do so as to keep Israel safe. If we want to keep Israel safe, then... The United States has to invade all of Iran. I mean, it is tiny enough or not. It is freaking gigantic and it is going to be a complete nightmare. But, but why not? It's not as if they're going to be sending their own guys there. It's going to be, yeah. Guys, it's, it's incredible that some people actually support this. Instead of having the more common sense, the, the Ron Paul attitude of you guys, you do, we defend our own borders and our own land. Um, no, imagine invading Iran. That would be that. that that's gonna be interesting. Uh, but anyway, and then we say this thing about Israel and Hamas. Man, the only thing I can tell you is look into what who actually started Hamas, who actually finances Hamas. I'm not gonna be doing your own homework. Do that on your own. Wonder. You you will be surprised to learn who is actually financing Hamas. It's not that difficult to find. And it's already over. We wish. Well said, Fernando. Completely backwards. Well, that's your opinion. Folks, that's going to be all for now. This, uh, th this is a very complicated times that we're in right now. Because if these guys go on with what they obviously wanted all along, they wanted this all along. Uh, who knows where this ends? The idea of uh, uh, Israel has nuclear bombs, Iran has nukes as well, and the allies of Iran, they're not usually the kind you want to screw around much with. But we are at this moment, guys. See you on our next video. Take care.